Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a PTV. <laughs> That's the name of the company or this product. It stands for Pro Television. And then the PT5230 Digital Video Generator. It's a one unit, 19 inch uh, rack. And uh, I bet this one can do color bursts and all sorts of uh, funky test patterns for television stations. Of course, this was used in the 90s, back in the good old days before all this digital stuff. Let's look a little bit on the back connectivity. So here at the back, it looks like a lot of options would have been available or this unit could exist in yeah many different variants we got a yeah, little bit of remote change over serial ports or something like that that would just be analog genlock genlock monitor well well i'm actually a little bit curious about what is this analog Where's the, where's the normal black burst? This will be our outputs, I guess, right? Yeah, let's uh, open and investigate the state of this really, really big, super duper deep unit. Let's look a little bit on the inside. It is super, super packed. I mean, look at that, we got two large plug-in boards here for the different options and room for two more and there's even possible to put one more on top here and this way interconnect using micro match connectors they're quite happy about those connectors to the different uh, boards and what you see here is 10 fpgas in different sizes and a lot of eproms and what not, I believe that will be the display playback system. <laughs> oh, this is nice. There's a few um, really funny uh, mechanical things in this unit. And look at the power supply and the fan is very, very high, almost touching. Oh, it's actually over the top edge and this is the same uh, for the power supply, it's actually over this. So they milled a hole for this and for the fan in the top plate so they could keep this within uh, one unit height. So here we see the milled. I mean, this is just a millimeter or something like that. It's not super deep, but they really went all the way, didn't they? I see some stickers all over the place with this gpv and then 0225 so this tells me all about the age so this is from 2002 of course and we can see this ic here is from 1999 so this back this up as well i think this is one input for black burst synchronization it's a uh, very very advanced with AD converters and special FPGAs and all the the smallest chips like that will be EPROMs and the bigger ones like the one you see in the middle that will be FPGAs the small ones and that will be some really really big and hefty ones from Altera we got EPROMs quite uh, big EEPROMs. I think those are 16 bits and those are 8-bit EEPROMs, UV erasable. And if you take away this sticker, you'll see a big um, glass window. It's not made of glass exactly, but some other fantastic material that will uh, let UV light go through. So 
I think this board here is, of course, the interconnect motherboard for all the different plugins and such. And again, a little bit of FPGAs, a little bit of microcontrollers, like this little tiny microcontroller right there. And a, this big gray box, I think it is a crystal oscillator. I don't know yet, but I plan to find out. We can also see the other board down there is also full, full, full of similar technology. And um, over here near the display and near the all the front plate buttons, the cables to all that goes into this little microcontroller system right here. That one is, of course, the microcontroller, and that will be a little one-time programmable for the software for that. And then there is a little clock and battery backed up for settings, probably so you can remember the last little setting mode or whatever you did to this one. Power supply filters and all that is done perfectly fine. And this power supply is a multiple output version. Look at that, five amps in five volts that's a lot of current but of course it is also really really wild the technology level here but i don't find any kind of burnt uh, melted or too hot components anywhere not even the tantaliums nothing so i will definitely try and power this up and see if there's any sign of life left in this one so that is the bottom that board yeah we got the top one lying right there and I'll, of course always touching the metal here to avoid any kind of sta static discharges and again can you just imagine doing all this software for these and the development process of all this every time you need to pull out the ICs and do another one erase by UV and reprogramming and I mean, all those different chips full of software, it's just amazing. And that will, of course, be the analog converter for this little analog input-output board. All the circuit boards, they are multi-layer boards. And again, we got a lot of analog front end going on here. And this is, of course, the analog, uh, it's a digital converter. And uh, you can, of course, see two different ground planes between those two front ends. And here we got a screw that's connecting the chassis to that because this those also goes to chassis. So that will be, yeah, chassis and ground for all that analog stuff that is related to the single-ended signals right there. And... Uh, Let's look at the bottom side of this. What do you think about the filters? The way they are cut like that. This, well, I mean, they're definitely asking for short circuits. So I'm not super happy about this. But there's another thing I want you to, um, to see. The two different ground planes and the signals that's just crossing over here and there and everywhere over a broken ground plane let's try and give it a little bit of light from the back then it's easier to see that they've broken the ground plane but again it's full of crossing signals i mean that is definitely a big big design mistake we can also see it from the other side here that in the middle of the picture is the single ground to ground connection and all the signals from the two grounds should of course have been routed in that area very very close to that uh, for proper and correct uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing also a few other things i see on this uh, on the on all the circuit boards it's just the angles for all the tra the tracks look at the different angles it's just completely 
random and i think yeah 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 look at this you can just see all the funky routing angles all over the place i mean what are they doing and this is designed in 2002 uh, i mean using modern cad but yet we see all those uh, funny random angles on more or less everything and that is a little bit special for a complex layout like this but definitely funny to mention and here's a little wire that was uh, forgotten it's probably doing something very important <laughs> oh yeah so let's see is it alive self-test in pole self-test past version yada yada and then what status signal something like that well well it seems like black burst sub menu analog you can do some different timing phases system pal ntsc and all this save and exit yes definitely want pal execute color bar oh power on output boing color bar aha so i think we did it let's see if there is any output it's using 35 watts and i don't think Ooh, yoy, yoy. yeah i'll get uh, i'll get over this <laughs> in a little while and see what is going on i also really want to know what is inside this gray box of mystery box right there so i was able to find the output on one of the bnc connectors and what we see here is the color burst and it is alternating the phase and this is exactly what pal stands for phase alternating line so each line this phase is flipping phase and this is why the colors they are really nice and stable because the receiver can lock to this much much better so here we got the color bars and look at that is our picture frame start i think i'll go and get a monitor so we can see this uh, much better i am having so much fun with this unit it's difficult to capture everything here and uh, we can play around with the different settings and you can see here on this screen what is going on maybe i should try and turn it a little bit like that is that a little bit better i don't know and then color bars some different types of uh, color bars red and just color bars with different kinds of things so that is the different color bars we can also yeah look at that so that will be different kind of bursts for frequency and stability in your system this is pushing the high frequency to the maximum with this going faster and faster and faster and uh what else can we see here oh look at that what is that doing i haven't really figured that out linearity oh look at that this is not the best screen as you can see it's not covering the entire range of linearity special what is that so this is one of oh see we also got the high definition one and there's a different uh, test screen like that and also in high definition yeah so it definitely seems to be working and uh, <laughs> fantastic uh, unit but what can we use a test pattern generator for today? Well, 
maybe not a lot. Like I promised, I really wanted to know what is inside this little mystery box right here. And it is nice and warm. So I think I did guess right. And also, this circuit board here is also full of broken ground planes like that. And look at that. Tons of tracks going going over broken ground planes. So, I mean, somebody said, oh, let's do broken ground planes. It's really, really good. But they did not understand why you want to do it and when. And I mean, look at that. It's one big disaster. <laughs> it's so funny to see when somebody completely misunderstood something. Oh man, it's funny. And this is of course why I have a good job telling people how to do stuff like that. <laughs> oh, and other things to mention. Look at the way tracks are going really, really close to the edge, touching the edge more or less here. This is also forbidden, but this close to my spouts bites. Look at that. Why are you doing this? This is a multi-layer board. There's plenty of other ways to solve this. Here you go. I mean, down here, we got a track that is, of course, going the minimum width all the way. This is good. Good, safe brilliant but then here oh let's make it this close to disaster that is bad 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 and again look at the funny angles on more or less everything like what the heck is going on with this design tool here this is so much fun to see all the funky angles well well this is, of course, a crystal oven oscillator, and uh, there is a power transistor here that can warm up this entire piece of aluminium. And we'll see a circuit board down here or something. we got some pins that's going up. It's soldered in. I don't think there is a connector, so I don't think I can pull this. Yeah, maybe I can. If I unscrew this transistor here, I can maybe pull this off and let's see what's inside. But I really don't want to damage it. I'm just super curious to see how they implemented this oscillator. But it's still burning hot. I was not able to get in here because there is no connector. It is soldered. So I tried to pull it real careful, but that is not going to happen. So we'll just have to imagine a little nice oscillator in there or something like that. But there's another thing to this I think is a little bit different. Look at that. It's an LM317. So it's a voltage regulator. And uh, why is this mounted here to warm this up? Because a voltage regulator, really? That is funny. And it is connected to this op amp circuit around here. And there's a trimmer and all that. So this is probably something with the temperature feedback and controlling. But I definitely think it's very, very uh, special using a voltage regulator for the heater. Or it can just be that this adds some heat, but the real heater is in here. And it's uh, a little temperature sensor and all that kind of stuff because we see some thick tracks going to this op amp circuit and whatnot. So this voltage regulator, by having it here, it will have the exact temperature and it will add heat anyway. And by having this at a fixed temperature, now the voltage it's generating will be nice and fixed and stable for the rest of the circuit in here. So that could also be uh, the theory behind the this design here so well well there you have it <laughs>